Oh, how long's two meters? Do you that's two meters? No. It'll do though, right? I'll keep my distance. Yeah, wait. The distance. Yes, people. Welcome back to Brendan Pearson Fitness. This is a socially distant, uh, what's it? A socially distant training session with a professional footballer, Kyle Cameron of Torquay United. Should do it. Well, I'll do a close-up shot right now. You can't really get any closer. <laughs> there you go. Right, so we're just gonna do a mixed bag of stuff. To be fair, it's just we're both on a deal all week, so we're gonna be doing some cleans, not too heavy, but we'll start off with some speed and agility work. And then I'm just gonna blitz his legs for a bit. It's about an hour and a half to do a session. But starting off, we're gonna do some breathing technique because two reasons. We're both breathe through our mouth. You sleep like a I don't know, I remember we used to live together, yeah. mate, honestly. Nice like snow, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna get a clip, I'm gonna get the clip from my view. Right. Gonna do some breathing techniques. I've been reading oxygen oxygen advantage. So we're gonna start off clearing our nose and we're gonna try and breathe through our nose. As much as we can. So, to start off, what we're gonna do is gonna breathe out through our nose, pinch our nose, and try and walk as many steps as we can. We'll see if we can walk them with small steps. So, we're gonna do that probably like three or four times just to help clear the nose and then try and. Well, there's lots of benefits to breathing in through your nose, but I'll talk about that in a different video. But for now, right, so breathe out through your nose as nice, as nice and normal, and then just walk as many steps as you can. Hold the breath, then hold it all like Oh, breathe out through your nose, sleep my lungs, and then walk. Yeah, so yeah. just breathe out when you're ready. Three, two, one. That's the best I've ever done, to be fair, 60. I mean, you've had some practice on that. I haven't really done that much, no. Yeah, my nose oh. says it's cleared already. Mm -hmm. How many times have you done that? Three times? Yeah, so, literally, all you got to do is breathe out through your nose, just like you normally would. Don't take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Just breathe in, in and out through your nose. When you breathe out on the exhale, hold your nose, walk as many steps as you can. I think the aim is to get to 80. I think I've got 60 there, I'm, I'm happy with that. Like, I've never I've got 30. I was saying, normally I only get 40 steps or something like that, but. And then as soon as you're done, keep your mouth shut whenever you're obviously struggling to breathe. Take your hand off your nose and breathe in through your nose, breathe out, and it just clears it, clears it out. But I will go through the benefits of it in a different video, but if you haven't already, follow Oxygen Advantage. So we'll try that another time. Give yourself a, like a minute afterwards just to get your breath back and stuff, but try and control your breathing as well. So. Right, we've done a little bit of a warm up, just jogging and stuff, great stretch, all that stuff. But we're going to do a few activation drills. So we'll do four, four simple ones. We're just going to do one set of each, apart from Copenhagen, which we'll do two. So we've got alternating glute bridge march, which I've done before, dead bugs, which I've done before, set of 20, uh, Copenhagen's, which I've showed. We'll do two sets of 20 seconds either side, and lateral band walks, just for the band to get the glutes activated. So simple little warm up drill. Uh, get it done, and then we'll get on to some some agility and speed stuff. some speed stuff so we've done more walk, done more activation we'll do some speed we'll do it center half specific so normally i'll just do ground starts just on my programs for last week i'm just doing straight 20 meter yard 20 yard run sorry not 20 meter run all we want to do is as a center half the ball's coming over your head side step in till you get to the pole so we'll do three sets obviously facing either way so you're checking either side 
It's quick rotation. We'll do one warm up set either side and then into three sets either side. Nice. Right, so we're nice and warm now, we've done a six set. Gonna have a little bit of a sprint race, PT versus pro footballer, ret retired goalkeeper. What? We'll do uh, Excuses. What? Excuses. Excuses. <laughs> I'm gonna set the camera up down there, this camera's gonna stay on. And hopefully we can get a little photo finish. Let's go. That's not a shot off. Right, just you ready? So 10 seconds? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey! <laughs> I had a shit start there. Best of three. The three? Um, so I'm a slow starter. <laughs> I'm a stiff. Mate. There it is, excuses. Ready? I'm oh, so <laughs> Why am I so slow? <laughs> Fuck hell. It's a light wash. <laughs> Oh! That's best one in the video. Shambles. Fuming. Look at that. Look at that. Bag of shit once. Bag of shit always. Simple as that. 3 0, whitewash. Alright, after that absolute embarrassment, right. I'm going to do speed as you. I'm going to get a new same mods fucking sprinting program. I'm gonna get the stuff that I'm probably running advantage in. Weightlifting! Oh, f camera's moving out of the shop. Oh, you're a divvy, like. What we're gonna do is, just because we're both on a Dino, we're gonna do some speed, speed strength stuff, so five by five, uh, front squat, but we're gonna clean it up. We'll just build up to like, probably 60, 70% of what we would actually normally do. And I want to superset that with squat jumps just for some explosive work. So nothing too daft, but we'll get warm. Yeah, yeah, aye, aye. Same. Yeah, cheers, Skip. Thanks. Yeah.
Oh, let me rotate this way a little bit. That's it. That'll do what? That's, that's safe, to say it honest. <laughs> the bolt missing. No, I don't know. Well, my legs are like a metre and a half. Yeah, but we'll say that's about two metres. In conversation with cameras, so we'll finish the session. Well, Kyle did half of it because he had a do a Zoom meeting. So, what does an athlete have? Um, highly, does, it, does an athlete have a highly nutritious post workout meal? We'll talk us through the, um, the spread that we have in front of us. So, make and do with what I've got. Obviously, can't go in the house, make food right from. So, we've got chicken and bacon with oh, and malted bread with mayo. Lovely. We've got salmon and prawn selection sushi. We've got a nomadic. You'll get an old clusters, strawberries. Most anabolic yogurt, you know what man, that. Absolutely. Fantastic. We've got some pineapple from uh, one of your five a day. Yeah, good for um, protein digestion as well, pineapple. Soup. There you go, you learn something new every day, I guess. Yeah. We've got some hula hoops, big S hoops. That's the secret. Barbecue beef, just to keep your... I'm going to caption it, the secret. <laughs> the secret of becoming a rotor footballer. Keep you mentally sane. Put your hands over that, I'm going to film Mila, you holding them. The yep. secret to becoming a pro athlete. Absolutely. And a nice fun grip. Zero sugar, obviously. Fantastic. To uh, keep this going. So that's what the professional has. The retired, injury prone cripple is having chicken and rice and broccoli for breakfast and a protein shake with a banana. That's how, you, that's how you're not meant to do it, apparently. I would tend to go for some scrambled eggs, bacon with a bagel. That's my go to, like the break the fast at the moment. Um, but can't do that at the moment, so. Are you still fasting? Yeah. Fantastic. Try it though, anyway. Yeah, I but fast, I but I have that um, intro workout where I'm drinking. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm I've got years in, in um, I have carbs and that, I've been just eating those carbs. It's like the texture and stuff, do you have that? Yeah, I need to start getting on that again, but I'm like, it's normally rough about, it's normally rough about this time where, like, I'll finish eating. Yeah. I'll finish working, sorry, so then I'd eat, so... Oh, I'm tired. Working. Drafting. Well, work out. I think I'm with you, Dad. No, no. I'd normally finish training. I'll train my cousin at 11 o'clock. So we'll normally finish around this time. So it's only about 12, quarter past 12 by the time I get yeah. to so... So me and uh, Cam, Mr. Cameron will be doing a podcast, but this is just going to be a little uh, taster of what's to come. So talk, talk us through a typical day in the off-season. For a professional footballer, time do you, what time are we getting up? All right, so start with I was in a bit of a bad routine, just kind of sleeping in. Now I'm getting up at around about uh, getting up at nine. Um, get up, trying this new morning routine. So that's what's that? What's that consist of? Um, so get up, do my six minute diary. I've started to do. Great. Great. I've tried to start doing that. I say. Um, going all right obviously i've had a weekend of working so i haven't done this weekend but so i get up do that i'll try and do 10 15 minutes mobility 10 minutes guided meditation um there was one other thing on there oh yeah and read for 20 minutes as well what do you mean um i am currently reading what successful people do for breakfast thing it's called I don't know who that one. The only book I had in my house, all my books are down in, in Torquay, so I've got to bring them back with us, so I'll try to get back to them out. And then, after that, that'll take us, what, 40, 45 minutes-ish? Yeah. So I have about an hour and 15 minutes of just chilling out, and be catching up on my phone and stuff from the night before. Uh, and then I'll train my little cousin at the moment, at 11 o'clock, so... How old are you then? I'm 14. 14. He's at Sunderland as well, so... Just trying to get in, into the swing of the good, gym. Good age to get started into stuff. Yeah. Great age to get started. Start getting a bug. I think so. Enjoying it. Start getting a bug for it. Oh. Enjoying it so. Once you get the bug. I remember. I can remember the first time I got a pub. I can actually still remember it. Really? It was one of Jack Aid's upper body sessions. All S C coach. I think I was first year scholar. And we'd done a session. Because we used to do our sessions all together. Like the 18s. I remember, remember they were actually quite tough. It used to be quite hard ones. One of the first things I remember that stands out to me was with Graham. Yeah. Me, Graham. Shout out our big Graham Turner. Yeah. Shout out to Big G. Um, me and Jamie Sturry would go 
And I still remember this day, one session, it was the first time I started doing pull-ups. We were doing them on the Olympic, Olympic rings. rings. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know, it felt as if we'd done about a thousand pull-ups. I woke up the next day and I could literally get my arms like this straight, I couldn't straight. That was, I know, I remember because I started frames. And that was the first time I ever had doms in my forearms, so I did, must have done with them TRX rows. Mm. And I remember sitting in history and trying to straighten my arm. I was just sat in history, like, thought, like, what is this pain in oh. my forearms? Some of the worst pain I've ever felt has been with Graham White. Like, yeah. Just, that is the one session, like, in the early days of one, I remember. Yeah, like, I remember like, I couldn't do a pull. I actually remember a session I'd done with my dad when I was, like, 15. And I couldn't, we were just doing these set mix and we were just doing the ones where you have to, like, hold at five seconds each position, like, five second hold, five second yeah, hold, yeah, five yeah, second hold. Then, yeah. I'm oh. No, no, not till later. You on video? We're doing any conversations with Cameron. Why <laughs> not? I've got time at one. No point. Um. Quick time out. Time out. Time out. Pause it. Time out. Go back. Oh, right. Where were we? Talk about the old sessions. Yeah. The good so. old days. When do you think you started taking your training, seat, like trip gym training, seriously? Um, so I semi took it serious with Graham, obviously. They were, but they were just single sessions per week, so yeah. you wouldn't really class that as consistent serious training. Even though I did make quite a lot of progress um, through Graham, um, I probably wouldn't say it was until I got an ankle injury my first like real injury where I was stuck um, in obviously the academy for long periods of time through the days, not doing much. Um, so I think that's when I first started to see how old would I be? No, no, no. 18, 19? Yeah. So I went back from Newport, got an ankle injury, got into the gym. And then there was, at the time I think Kurt might be mentioned his ACL. Were you injured? Sam's always probably. Been injured. You were probably injured. There was a good four or five of that were in there. And we started Steve, training Stevie Steve, with Stevie Weir. Yeah. Shout out to Stevie Weir, you're best watching me. Yeah, we, that's some, I think that's probably when I sort of actually like fell in love with the gym and started semi taking it serious. Um, the past year and a half, I haven't trained as consistently as what I have done due to numerous. <coughs> Numerous reasons. A uh, lot of beep, a lot of game time, a lot more than obviously right, like what I was used to in the 23s and stuff, and um, other outside sources. Um, <laughs> but that's no fault of my own, to be honest with you. I just got a bit lazy, so uh, started getting back into it seriously the past four or five weeks with us in the off season. Since I told you you were a bad shit. <laughs> Since I am a bad shit, yeah. So, Started to fall back in love with it and really enjoy it again. So, I know it's hard to keep it going in season though. Like, especially Yarny, you play like, was it 40 or 40, 40 games? Like 40, 46 games a season. Um, so, obviously, this season we've been cut short, but the season before I played 43 out of 46, and the other three I was injured for. Yeah. Um, so, you know, actually, I wasn't even injured, sorry. I was, um, I was suspended for three games. Uh. So, well, if I hadn't been suspended, I would have played 46 or 46 games all the way, um, which is obviously a lot of a lot of hard season. It's just recovering in between games, isn't it really? And then you can probably yeah. do like you can do like upper like, body, upper yeah, body, you're probably fine. You like. can get a lot of upper body in, and, but you can't get a lot of legs in. So you kind of if you keep training like that, you're gonna get unbalanced yeah. eventually. So it's trying to fit in like good leg session. But I think this season I'm gonna try and constantly like every Tuesday. Because I know I've got a Wednesday off, yeah. but I don't have a game. Get um, get a good leg like, session and just try and keep that consistency. Yeah. Type. I do enjoy doing like the big lifts, like the bench press, squats, deadlifts. I like to see the improvement on that. So yeah, I want to try and keep that with the squat and stuff. I've never really done it. Yeah, you've just got to be careful of like over training, not like especially because you'll be training in the morning and then take going in on a Tuesday night doing a leg session. But you still like you might because you're probably still a little bit fatigued from the game on a Saturday. More than like you just got to be careful like little muscle strain so you just want like to drop the volume down loads and just focus on like imbalances all the single leg stuff so. yeah that's what I've been doing like obviously with your program I've been getting a lot of whatever a lot of exercises I've yeah. been like if I feel like I'm a bit tired I'll try and 
switch it to a single leg variation of yeah. whatever it is and just try yeah. to build up the unilateral stance. I mean, now you can have it, but to be fair, because of yeah. how Corona's been, I don't know when the season's going to start, but if it starts at normal, you've probably got a good like four week block now where you can actually smash the weights before. I got longer than that. I just had a phone call there. Yeah. And uh, they're probably not looking at getting back till the end of July. Really? So I've got to still have what's that, seven weeks. Okay, cool. This video won't be going on for two weeks, to be fair, so they'll probably know by then. Possibly, yeah. There's a meeting tomorrow, so they'll probably get a definite date, but I'm thinking of the season not starting until early September. Really? Yeah. Oh, well. Because obviously the Premier that needs to finish beginning of August. Might as well hammer the weights in now, just focus on chance to any build. imbalances you've got. If you like, like you, when I was playing football, I never trained legs, which is probably why I got a lot of knee injuries, because I used to hammer, hammer up my body. I was upper body dominant, awesome, yeah. upper body heavy, so smash the leg weights in now, and then when it gets closer and closer to see even taper just towards taper sports and stuff, so yeah. for now, for like the next four weeks, pick a four week block and just focus on hypertrophy, obviously keep you running, like, keep you running up, but just do more aerobic stuff. you you got to think, though, like, a lot of other sports have a long off season. Yeah. And so it's all periodised training. Yeah, and this is the first time I'm probably going to have, like, a real good... 12 week like yeah. off season like programming like actually yeah. getting myself built up properly so realistically going back this season should be the like fittest and everyone should be the fittest year. and strongest yeah, they've ever been it's like it's like nfl seasons because their seasons what like almost to january if they get the lips exactly, like they've, like, they've got a massive like so this is like what yeah. we've got now that's where they're like all oh, ridiculously ridiculous athletes and they do like they have like a few weeks off and then the off season the early stage it's like compound squat deadlift bench heavy 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 and then you take the walk towards sports single specific stuff, stuff like so. single leg stuff, doing some more plyometrics, some speed, agility, all that sport. And then eventually it's almost like you're peaking up to the season. And that's when you get the ball involved and whatever. Like keep the ball involved all the way through, but. Do you realize what I just wanna... I've enjoyed the break off without touching the ball. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I haven't touched the ball in a, little, like, a while now, so. Well, I'll probably start bringing that. In obviously with yourself and stuff like that anyway, like within the next few weeks, yeah, just to get my touch. I mean, you back. can do like if you've had injuries in the past, like ankle injuries and stuff, still get the ball involved, just do like single like, like balance stuff and just kick the ball, kick mm -hmm. the ball back. But I wouldn't say never stop kicking the ball, maybe have like probably like a two week period just to completely switch off from football. But it's nice, keep it's nice the ball. just to have yeah. that. Keep it. I had eight months off it from injury, and now I'm like. Itching. Kind of like, yeah, I, wanna, I didn't think I'd want to get back into it. But you are wanting to. Like my head when I got injured was just like, nah, I'm not getting back into yeah. football ever now. Like, I'm done. It's tough. It is a tough thing, like, it is a tough profession, but it's not easy and it does take a lot of mental yeah. strain and strength from people to like, keep going, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, I don't know. When, probably the best thing is for you now is that the season's not going on. Otherwise, that's when you'd be like, oh, I really want to get back in. Like, you've got that little break now. Yeah. So when the season starts up, and you see people start playing, and you're like, oh, yeah, like, I'm, I'm ready to, like, yeah, I'm ready to start. I do like, want to get back and do it. Yeah, 100%. But just how many, how many of the train? I can actually, I need to improve on my, uh, my sprinting mechanics, I think, to start with. Well, as you've probably seen in the video. Three little light I fell, I fell quick when I've been doing the clips the last few weeks, but I'm just like a snail getting off the mark. Like absolute snail getting off the mark. I feel rapid when I get there, but what, like, I just kind of get off the mark. Whenever we used to do sprint tests in Newcastle, you'd always be up there, so I was like, yeah, I might get sure of you. But I was your weight when I, when I was at Newcastle. Yeah. When I was like, hungry. Mm. Then I got injured and I just hammered the gym for a bit, and then I was like, 95 like kg. So then my base weight before I started the gym was probably, was not me. I think I was, when I was at Newport, we do weigh-ins like, every day. It was the first time I'd started like, actually weighing in like, yeah. every day like, for the club. And I was like 70, 75, 76 kilos. And like, for the period like, in, a, in a football league club. I'm going to edit that in slow motion. <laughs> <Yeah, that's, laughs> playing that football league club, that's like, very light considering when you see some of the size of some of the strikers and stuff. Like, oh, man. You know? Depends on your position, though. Like, some people can sprint. And be like heavy, like that fucking Triori, whatever his name is. But yeah, because he's just so athletic. He, like. Yeah, he's just athletically, he's built for that. Like, like me, I don't think I'm actually af I'm designed to be heavy because I've always been a skinny lad. Like, when I was younger, I did like athletics, I did needles and trips and stuff, and I was skinny, but I was good at it. Yeah, but I've enjoyed I enjoy gym stuff, so 
that was the thing with me. I was I shouldn't have really done gym as much as I did when I was playing football. It's the only thing I get you through though when you're injured. Oh mate, like, I know. That's the only that's the reason so what, I got so with it. And even when I in the morning. and when I was fit, I was still hammering the gym, which I think ended up leading us to get my double hernia. I was deadlifting like I wasn't yeah. squatting. I was deadlifting like heavy all the time. Well, you said you were doing calling every day as well. Yeah, it was which probably. And I was top heavy. And Kitch, Kitch said the same thing. He said that he got his same after. Yeah, he's the same. He's day. quite top heavy as well. Now obviously he's, he's balanced, balanced out, very yeah. balanced. But like he like have, having that time away from football to actually like balance your body out and focus on your weaknesses is probably good for a lot of lads. But it's just obviously getting back into the game is like it's hard. Yeah, very yeah, hard. Good. Mentally as well, because I don't know like what I'm gonna be like when I go back in. I feel quite like when I first started doing a bit before the lockdown, I felt rusty, but like I was get I was getting into it eventually. It just takes time. You, like you feel rusty. Like what you were saying the the podcast was maybe like the clubs expect you to go and be like tip top shape like straight away, but oh, yeah. realistically it's not gonna happen because you don't know any of the lads, you don't know what they like, how they play. Yeah. You've obviously got them a little bit of nerves, some like. Going somewhere, going new, somewhere it? new, it's just like a new environment where you've got a bed in, like it takes time, like things don't just happen overnight, it's the same with anything you do, like yeah. things don't just happen overnight, you've got to take time to adjust mentally, physically. You've got to have a manager who sees that, that's why I said if it's I go new. to a team I want somewhere where I can just enjoy it, and if I start enjoying it then I'll, I'll play good. The times when I've enjoyed my football the most is when I've played my best, like your oh, confidence is this. Yeah. But even if you have made a mistake, you don't want a manager that's like, gonna absolutely have me because then he's like what's the point yeah. like I'm obviously gonna make mistakes like, I wouldn't be at the level I'm at because because yeah. if you were if you were like squeaky clean you'd be playing off of them someone in the present you know I mean? yeah. even they make mistakes so like you just gotta be somewhere where they trust in you and they, they believe in you and I know you're gonna make mistakes but it was that uh, what's his name that's what life is that, that Declan Rice from West Ham made his debut against Newcastle you know what I mean I like, took off at half time yeah. he had an absolute stinker yeah. absolute stinker at half time I took off on his debut and now he's obviously fine. Well, just look, the camera is about to die. That was conversation with Cameron. Tokyo United. The you, you, official skipper here, vice skip. Vice, 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 vice skipper. Vice uh, skipper. League champion. 2000, what, what year was it? 2019? 2018, 19? Yeah, 2019. Fantastic. Tokyo legend. Cram United legend. Guy Post legend. Uh, BG, <laughs> BG Legends. BG Legends. <laughs> oh, the good old days. Oh, the days. Anyway, thank you everybody for listening. If you like the video, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already, because half of my viewers are actually not subscribed to my channel, which is horrendous on the analytics, which is not on. Awesome. Get subscribed. Build the channel slowly. It's been a pleasure having Mr. Cameron on today. But it's been a pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Joel! If Joel holds on. Joel, do you want to do the outro? We're trying to uh, wake Joel up for the outro, but he's still asleep at quarter past 12, so it's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Over and out. Bye bye.